Good morning. Welcome to Wincrest United Methodist Church. Welcome to everyone. Today we're going to hear the me a message from Reverend Jermaine Mathis. Most of you probably remember that Jermaine uh, w worked here with us as she was part of our clergy team for a number of years. Uh, and then uh, she will be doing the, the sermon. Uh, Pastor Jim is in Reno visiting his grandkids, and I am Reverend Joan Aarons, if you don't know me. Uh, next Sunday, we will recognize Children's Sabbath, and that's a time to reflect on God's gift of children and the ways we can renew our commitment to care for, protect, and advocate for all uh, children. If you would like to include your child or children to be prayed for, Text the word BOAT, B-O-A-T, to 210-817-7007. It's on, on the screen right now. This number is also on the front of today's bulletin, as well as on our church website, so look for it. Have you purchased pumpkins yet? If you have, then you've experienced the beauty and wonder of our pumpkin patch. If not... Then you have a treat waiting for you. The pumpkin patch is open Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. until 7 p.m. and then again on weekends uh, from 9 a.m. until 7 p.m. And there are plenty of pumpkins waiting for you there. Speaking of the pumpkin patch, there are some ways for you to volunteer to help out in the patch. We have uh, many openings for sales shifts. They are uh, available in two-hour increments, and help is always needed. It's a great way to get to know the community as well as someone here at the church that perhaps you did not know before. Reach out to Don Cruz if you are interested in serving. I will be leading a Disciple Bible Study 4, which will be the, the Gospel of John, the, the writings of John, and Revelation. And we will begin next Sunday from 4 to 5.30. It'll be on Zoom, so you can, you're all welcome. Uh, if you're interested, let me know, because I've, so far I've got 11 people, and let's see if we can get some more, okay? Because this is, this is great Bible study. Uh, children and youth Sunday school classes are held each Sunday from, uh, on Zoom from 10 to 10.45 a.m., don't forget our mission focus this month. It's Mercy Ships. You're welcome to give online through our website, or you can download our giving uh, app where you can manage and view your giving from the convenience of your smartphone. If, if part of your worship experience is placing your tithe and offering in the offering plate, you are welcome to stop by each Sunday between 8 and noon and drop off your giving. If you would like a bulletin with the order of worship, it can be found on our website, as well as any ministry contact information you might need. If you have prayer concerns, please let us know. Uh, let the, the worshiping community know and join us in prayer with those who are participating in worship and on the prayer team. Some of the prayer concerns and thanksgiving we have received this week are Ed and Rosie for healings. We've also uh, need to keep in mind Harriet Martell, also uh, Shelley Burnham and uh, Eleanor Bench are both in uh, rehab right now, and everybody is, seems to be doing okay. So keep people in your prayers. Keep keep those that we know in in your prayers. And please submit any other prayer requests. It's great to have you in worship today. So take a deep breath. Invite the Holy Spirit to guide you into this holy space, in this holy time, as we begin our worship with music.
Good morning. Please stand and join me in our call to worship. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. and pardon. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways and the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life and let all say amen. And now uh, it's time for us to exchange the peace of Christ so you can just wave wherever you are, okay? <laughs> it's great to, great to see you, you all who are here. Okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer with our pastoral prayer. Gracious God, thank you for all you give us. Thank you for our congregation. Thank you for those of us who can meet through technology. Lord, we thank you that you are keeping us as a church going, that you are helping us, that you are guiding us. Lord, we ask that you be with those who are in rehabs, those who are in uh in, are concerned about their health, be with each one of us and allow us to truly be your body. 
Thank you for the connections that we have and the love that we have. Help us to share with one another and to be open and honest with all that's going on. Guide us, direct us, and keep us. In Jesus' precious name, let all say amen. Join me now in our affirmation of faith. I be please, yeah, please stand. It's been a while since I've done this, so I forget, you know. <laughs> you know how it is. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <laughs> join me in prayer. God of peace, we are confronted with so many overwhelming needs in our world. Walk with us as we set aside our own desires and wants and join the call to alleviate human suffering. Transform these financial gifts into genuine acts of concern and ministry to others. In the name of the one who surpasses all understanding, we pray. Amen.
remain standing for our prayer of illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 1 through 14. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent out other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. While the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Seated. All right, well, good morning to the children at home. Good morning to the children at heart that are here with us today. Um, Our children's time today is going to be a little different. We're going to be doing it based on the Old Testament reading, if I can pull it up. So I brought something with me today. Good morning, children. There you are. I am Miss Kristen. Miss Christie is not here today. So So today, I brought with me this. It is a little statue that I brought with me. And I have a little game for you. During this time, when I am doing our children's sermon, if you ever see me hold up the statue, I need you to stand up and freeze like a statue. But when I put the statue down... You can unfreeze and sit back down. Let's try. So it's up. Freeze like a statue. Sit back down. So you're going to have to pay attention and see if it's up or down. (laughs) All right. How many of you have a statue at home? Maybe a little statue like this? Or maybe you've gone somewhere and you've seen statues. Sometimes we see statues of famous people from history Sometimes characters from children's story. I know in Abilene, they have this great area where there's all sorts of statues of children's books characters. I know I've been down to the beach, and I've seen the statue of Selena down there. So we have all kinds of different statues. Statues are fine. They're great, and they help us remember different things. But they're fine unless they become something that we worship other than God. When we do that, the statue becomes an idol that replaces our God. (laughs) That is what our Bible lesson is about this morning. Moses was up on Mount Sinai, and I'm sure you remember that God told Moses to go up to the mountain so that God could give him the Ten Commandments for the people to follow. Now, Moses stayed up on the mountain longer than the people thought he should. And they went to Aaron and they said to him, We want you to create gods who will go before us so that we will know the way. As for the fellow Moses who brought the people out of Egypt, we don't know what's happened to him. So they were concerned that Moses was gone way too long. And Aaron answered them, Take off your gold earrings you are wearing and bring them to me. So all the people took off their earrings and brought them to Aaron. And he took all the gold that he had given them And he made it into an idol in the shape of a calf. (laughs) 
the people were very happy with the idol that had been made for them. When Aaron saw how happy the people were, he built an altar for the calf and said, Tomorrow will be a festival to the Lord, and for you to rise up early, make a sacrifice, and burnt offerings to the calf. When God saw that the people were doing, he became very angry. And he told Moses that he was going to destroy the people because of their unfaithfulness. But Moses begged to the Lord to remember the promise that he had made to Abraham, Isaac, and the children of Israel. Moses convinced the Lord that he had changed his mind and did not want to do what he said. And he did not want to destroy his people. What can we learn from this story? We sometimes put other things before God. And it may not be an idol made of gold in the shape of a calf, but maybe it's things like friends, sports, YouTube videos, money, anything that we put ahead of our love for God becomes an idol. And that takes place in our heart, and that is a mistake. We always want God to be first in our hearts and in our lives. Please pray with me. Dear God, let us always remember that you created us and all we have. You must always have first place in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. As Reverend Jermaine Mathis brings us our message. Good morning. Welcome to Windcrest United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Jermaine Mathis, and I am in here this morning for Reverend Jim McLean. It is a joy for me to be here, and I hope wherever he is, he is having a wonderful time. I know he misses you all very much. I'd like to read for you uh, from Paul's letter to the Philippians. I'm in the fourth chapter. And I'll be reading verses 1 through 9. Hear the word of the Lord. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Eudia and I urge Sentisha to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, Help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable. If there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of God for all people. Thanks be to God. I love this Philippians text. Paul relates how much he loves these Christians of Philippi and how he longs to be with them. And he raises them up as his joy and crown. I feel like Paul as I visit with you from afar in this time of COVID. I love the body of Christ here at Windcrest United Methodist Church and I always lift you up in my prayers as God's joy and crown. Yet as wonderful and God-filled as you are, and as wonderful and God-filled as the 
Philippians were, there was and is still a word from God. That word is expressed before the word, therefore, and through the word, finally. Those are the two words, therefore, finally. I say therefore because therefore means for that reason or consequently, referring us to something that came before the word therefore. In the previous chapters, Paul tells us and reminds the Philippians that he loves that they proclaim Christ out of love. Some didn't, and some today don't. He says others proclaim Christ from envy and rivalry or selfish ambition. It's difficult for us to hear that. And it's equally difficult to think that church people don't have the same well-being for the body of Christ. This begs all to ask the question, why are we in church? And then we ask, why do we do what we do? And then, why do we proclaim the Christ? Paul speaks from a time of imprisonment, a time where he had more than enough time to think about the Christ. During isolation, he has developed a, a more intimate relationship with Jesus. So he knows for what he is living, and he knows for what and for whom he would die. Because we all live in this time of COVID, we all have had time of isolation to think, to pray, to recollect, to do nothing, to write our wills. Lawrence and I just completed our wills because in this, this time of COVID, we also think of our mortality. We do fall in the category for poor outcomes if we contract the virus. So we continue in a quarantine lifestyle, and as we pray, we contemplate more deeply for what we live and for whom we would die. And we are challenged to find new and innovative ways to proclaim faithfully the Christ of love, from this, our new lifestyle. Then Paul says, live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel. In other words, behave. Behave as citizens. Not as earthly citizens, but citizens of a higher community with Christ as the head. I need a constant reminder of this one. I struggle to be a citizen of God's kingdom, sometimes with my own impatience, my own bias, and intolerance. But I catch myself and I remember who I am, especially as I watch the news and read articles and, and books about current events. I find myself praying the words of the prophet Habakkuk. Oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not listen? or cry to you, violence, and you will not save? Why do you, you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. 
strife and contention arise. The law becomes slack and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, judgment comes forth perverted. These are the words of the prophet. Yet they have become my words. How long, O oh God? How long? Where is God's kingdom in this? Where is God in this? Where are the citizens of heaven? Are none to be found here on earth? Are hate and confusion, distrust and dishonesty, omission and neglect, are they now the, the cornerstones of our lives? Are our eyes closed to what is happening in the world? Do we not hear? Is there one who will honor the gospel and proclaim our citizenship to be in heaven while we live here on earth? I may be wrong, but I believe I'm not alone in this struggle. or in my time of praying this prayer of the prophet. Paul goes on, regard others as better than yourself. Look to the, the interests of others. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord, working together. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God at work in you. It is not you doing all the, the ministries, all the things running around in the church. It is not you. It is God in you. It is God who gives us the will to work in and for the kingdom. And it is an invitation to weave our lives and thoughts and actions together with the divine as we interact with God's process of salvation. All this is before, therefore. Once all this is accomplished, then we move to the therefore. Are we ready for therefore? Are we? My grandson and I like to watch a game show called Ultimate Tag. There's one segment of the game where the players uh, run through the maze without getting caught, hopefully, to ding the bell of victory at the other end of the court. If they are tagged anywhere between the start and the finish, they must begin again. That's the way I envision all of Paul's teachings here. All of this has to happen before the therefore. If we can master all these, if we can master proclaiming Christ out of love, if we can master living our lives in a manner worthy of the gospel, behaving as heavenly citizens, if we can master regarding others as better than ourselves, if we can master being in one accord, if we can master working in partnership with God, for our own salvation. Then we can ding the bell and move on to therefore. If not, if we are caught or we are negligent, 
or we are selfish or disloyal to the kingdom, then we must start over. But I say to you, Windcrest Christians, persons who are listening in, persons who are guests of the Christ this day, as Paul said to his beloved Philippians, you are God's joy and crown. Stand firm in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. Do not worry about anything and keep doing the things that you have learned and received and heard. God has shown us what is good. You know what is good. You know it. Do not be fooled. Many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. And the text says, beware of the dogs, as Paul calls them. But they exist in our lives today under different names. Nevertheless, beware. You know when you are hearing something that is not right. You know when you are seeing something being done that is not right. Beware. And now we reach, finally, beloved, whatever is true, and you know what is true, deep down in your very soul, you know what is true. Whatever is honorable, I needn't describe honor. Do you know what is just? I think sometimes we do need to have a vocabulary lesson on what is just in the eyes of God. Whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing these things, and the God of peace will be with you. You know who you are. You know that you are citizens, of heaven, living here on earth for just a short period of time. We are here to do what is right and what is good and what is pleasing to God. Therefore, and finally, we are here. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May you be blessed. Amen. Our hymn of invitation is Rejoice, the Lord is King. Please stand and as we worship God together.
Now let us go forth to love and to serve God in every aspect of our lives. During this COVID time, reach out to someone on the phone that you may not have talked to for a while, but be God's person in everything you do. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. And thank you, choir. Thank you.